Hey, welcome back. My name is Dr. TK and in this video we will be talking about three things that psychology practicum students can implement right now to secure their ideal practicum or internship site. Let's go ahead and tune in. All right, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, I wanna say welcome. Now this video is specifically for psychology students that are actually in graduate school and you are very close to preparing to apply to a practicum, which means that you're still in school and you're collecting hours that do not count toward licensure, but you still have to collect them to graduate. And or maybe even you're preparing to apply for internship, which is a whole nother loaded probably video. So we're gonna focus on practicum today but I do believe that the tips that I'm going to share with you today can be implemented pre and post graduation so number one when you are in the process of applying for practicum you want to make sure to get a breath of experience so what does that look like make sure that you tap into different forms of your curriculum in terms of classes that you take so most schools give you a curriculum to follow but they also may give you an option for electives so during my first year I did an elective called narrative therapy. I've never heard of narrative therapy. Once I got into the class, I loved it. And it was just another form of how to get the client to tell their story in more of a narrative. And that was really my jam because clearly I love marketing. I love storytelling. Other areas um, that I dived into were classes like child and adolescent um, developmental psychology, not just general developmental psychology. I tapped into psychopharmacology and other theoretical orientation classes or even specific um, populations that I may want to work with in the future so that I can be more prepared to apply to practicum sites and be more competitive. Number two, sharpen up your interview skills. And so this may require you to sit with a friend and start interviewing one another. Make sure that you sit up straight. Make sure that you pick out your outfit. Now I have on all black. I would say choose something that represents who you are authentically to yourself, but don't do it to a point where you're showing out. Like for example, I would not wear to a mental health interview a hot pink jacket. Now, will I do that for a YouTube video? Heck yes. Will I do it for my private practice? Yes. When I was working in the jail, would I have worn it? No, right? So it really depends on where you're choosing to work. You should do your research on the website of the actual agency that you're applying for, but make sure that you practice with a friend for interviewing techniques, making sure that you can make eye contact, make sure that you don't use the word um a lot, because I know I do that even in videos, but this is not an interview. This is just a casual conversation between me and you on your computer or your phone, okay? And so make sure that you sharpen up on your interview skills and practice, practice, practice. And also note that a interview for a a mental health career position is not the same as an interview for retail or for fast food if you're coming out of college because that's the places that I used to work so for example one interview question that comes up a lot is identify three things that you identify as your strengths and then identify one to three things that you would consider as your weakness now in school they used to teach us how to mention a weakness but how we flipped it into a strength so I was called out on this when I was actually applying for internship because up to this point it worked. But keep in mind, you're interviewing with people who read people. Hello. So I answered the question and I said, I talk fast. You probably say I talk fast on these videos too. Sometimes I need to slow down. So they may say that I talk fast or one of them I said was that I care a lot. I go above and beyond for my clients. But of course, how I turn that into a strength, because clearly that can lead to burnout, is that my clients know that I care about them. So I had a gentleman, a psychologist that said, OK, that's nice. Give us a real weakness. And I really had to think because I practice like three weaknesses. And so make sure that you sit down and ask yourself, what are some strengths and weaknesses that you have as it relates to being a person? Now, please keep in mind, don't say anything that's gonna make you look super bad like I come to work every day late. Definitely not an interview etiquette answer that you wanna say in an interview, okay? Number three, I want you to walk into that interview with confidence. I want you to show up, show out, but be humble. So what do I mean by that? 
I'm actually gonna give you an example. I knew my stuff. Before I went into my doctoral program, I was actually in a master's program. My practicum experience in my master's program was horrible. And that's one of the reasons why I chose to get my doctorate because I felt like I just did not have enough experience. My clients were having a transformation, but I really didn't really understand the theory. If you asked me what did I just do, I wouldn't be able to tell you outside of regular terminology, right? But that's how I knew I was in the right field. And so I was interviewing at one particular site. I literally got called back from 10 different practicum sites, all 10 that I applied for. So that was really good. I showed up well on paper, but of course they wanna match that to who they meet in person. So it was a group interview. I really didn't know what to expect. It was maybe seven to 10 clinicians or practicum students in that interview. So for myself, I started answering all the questions like quickly. And then after like the third question, I realized I was really the only one answering the question. After three of us answered the question, everybody else didn't say anything. And I'm like, oh my God. And so I decided to humble myself because I did not want to look like that person who was eager to get all the attention and keep raising her hand. So they actually had mentioned like, dang, Takesha has like a lot of the answers. So they all start laughing like the people who were doing the interview. So what I end up doing is I said, you know what, on the fourth question, I'm not gonna say anything. I'm gonna humble myself and I'm just gonna let somebody else answer, you know, cause I don't wanna be that person in the interview. And so I sat back and the fourth question went out no one raised their hand. Now, I don't know if that was a result of social psychology. They just maybe felt like I was gonna keep answering, but I sat there in silence for like one whole minute. That is a long time. So then the facilitator, one of them of the interview said, well, Takesha, do you have an answer? And I looked at everybody trying to see if they were really not going to answer and they were all looking at me and I'm like, well, damn. So I said, yeah, you know, so I went ahead and answered the question. And then really, again, no one really answered, but that also showed me that maybe I came more prepared also because I had had a not great experience in my master's program. So I wanted to make sure that I was also interviewing the site by how they were showing up. So can you believe that because I showed up and showed out, but I humbled myself and I allowed them to, you know, interject me into the interview process at that time and say, answer the question. Um, right before I walked out the room, they said, hold on, they wanna talk to you. Now that's really unheard of because they usually will follow up after they've had a few different groups of interviews. I could not even get to my car in the parking lot before they offered me the position. I'm like, wow, do you know that I was offered every single practicum site um, that I went on an interview for? Cause I went on all of them. I was offered a position at every single site that feels good. Is that rare? Yes. But why did that happen? Because I did my homework on the sites. I chose the sites that represented who I wanted to work with at that time. I also was told to get a breadth of experience, not just in the classroom, but also at my practicum sites. So I applied to places that served children, adolescents, adults, geriatric, did psychological testing, inpatient, outpatient, hospital, drug, substance abuse, like sites. I just applied to them all because you never know if you're gonna like something unless you try it. So once I applied and they all caught back and then I went to the interview, whether it was one-on-one -on -one or in a group, and I actually did really well, that actually boosted up my confidence to let me know that nothing can stand in my way. And it wasn't a mistake of what happened in my practicum experience. It actually was a life lesson that I'm glad I learned from and I implemented it in my future career path. And so I really hope that this spoke to any psychology student who's in the process of applying to practicum. If you have specific questions about how you should show up in a practicum or internship interview, I am the person that you wanna ask all these questions to. I've been a college professor, I've taught from high school psychology kids all the way up into the dissertation process. Um, I've been a dissertation chair. Um, I've been over different boards at different colleges. And I know a lot about practicum sites and the process 
probably because I'm also a clinical supervisor or at least I was for a long time. So I really hope that you've enjoyed this video. If this video spoke to you, please let me know what was your biggest takeaway in the comment box. Make sure to share this video with your psychology friends and don't forget to subscribe so that you can be notified of when I come out with a video. I will see you in the next video where we will continue to talk about how you can have an abundant lifestyle and a profitable mental health career. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.